with Addison specifically, I know he came out of high school as a tackle. Can you go into him working at center and, and just what you've seen from him at that position? Yeah, I think one, wanting to help him learn the offense as fast as you can. Um, try to, when you play center, it's the har hardest position initially because it's moving so fast. There's a lot, you have to make every single call. Um, and the speed of the game is faster inside as well. So I think to kind of help expedite his process, because I'm not sure where he'll have to um, fit in and play for us, where that's going to be at center, guard, or tackle. Um, thought was, let him start at center, learn the offense, and then as he kind of gets that down, branch him out. Coach, when you're recruiting, do you try to identify somebody that is a, a tackle or a guard or a center, or do you want to recruit somebody that's versatile enough to play any of those positions? You know, it's a little bit of uh, a little bit of both. We do typically start with guys that <clears throat> are tackles, guys that are more inside guys. I think sometimes there's a, a unique combination where a guy has the feet or the length or the brains, the traits, whatever it would be that he can play inside, can play outside. Typically do try to pinpoint, man, this guy's going to be a tackle or this guy's going to be a center guard. Um, kind of asking through the process, uh, talked about, man, he could play a bunch of different positions just because how smart he is. Austin, the Glenn, can you just talk about uh, – you know, what you've seen so far out of J.J. Crawford and, and, and then Gerald Mincy? Uh, I think both of them have done a really good job. You know, they put in a lot of time in the off season. You, you know, guys be up here on their own just working their butts off trying to get better. Um, I think Mincy has accelerated his process a little bit, and I think J.J. has done a great job of not picking up where he left off, started off ahead of where he where he ended the season. He's uh, playing a lot faster. Doesn't seem to be as delayed and coming off the ball a lot um, more sure of himself. Um, I don't know. They both have really, really done uh, done a really good job. Sometimes you can have uh, very few starters coming back and you sort of have a clean slate of what you're going to do. But this year you have four starters back. Um, and you can maybe toy with that, move pieces around. How are those two challenges different in figuring out where guys fit since you have so many guys back? Um, you know, I think they're a little bit different in the fact, obviously, when you lose a bunch of guys, you have to figure out who's going to be the best at a position initially, and you're trying to, like, you aren't quite as far ahead as you are. Um, having four guys returning, especially where J.C. played some center, Nell's gone back and forth, uh, sides. Like, there's a little bit more wiggle room. Um, guys, you feel like know where they played last year well enough that if you have to move them, adjust them, play different places in spring, it's not such a big deal. And hopefully gives you a chance for guys that haven't played as much where they can just sit still, sit in a position, learn it, and feel a little bit more comfortable. Glenn, following up on, on, on Mincy, you got, I think you guys recruited him at your previous school, knew a lot about him when he went, I guess when he transferred. What, what made him a guy that you guys wanted to bring in and, and bolster your options there at, at tackle? Man, I, I just really, um, two, the same thing you'd want uh, when he came out of high school. I thought, one, he had unbelievable athletic ability and body control for such a big man. Um, and, you know, our high school thought we had a good relationship. You know, it was one of those situations that Florida was a little bit um, better situation for him than UCF was. Um, but I knew at the core who he was as a human being um, and that there was an intelligence level there that was unique with his body type and things that he can do athletically. Um, I think just, you know, sometimes things don't always start the way you think they'll end up, and now it's ended up in a better spot. Two things. What's the next step for Cooper Mays? Um, gosh, I mean, I think always he's going to uh, continue to get stronger, continue to build his body. Um, you know, I think he's taken the step leadership-wise. Him and Rome have been awesome. Uh, they, they've got in front of the room, um, led meetings, corrected. Coop's constantly, like – now you're in the meeting room and something happens and before I can get it out of my mouth, 
him or Rome have jumped in there and said, hey, man, we need to do this or start coaching this. Uh, man, don't want to say this. Sometimes they even correct me a little bit. Um, so their, their leadership piece of it's been unbelievable um, with Coop. And I think just continuing to build, get stronger. You know, he, he kind of got thrown in there as a freshman where you didn't get a chance to really get a year of solid, especially with COVID um, weight room. I think he's kind of done that over the off season. I think he'll be a even better version of himself. And with today being pro day, when you get asked about Cade Mays, what do you tell them they're getting in him potentially? Man, really um, high intelligent, uh, level of intelligence player that can play. I mean, he he bailed us out and played tackle, but he can play guard, center. Um, guy that's physical, uh, just unbelievably physical. Loves the game. Loves to practice the game of football. Doesn't uh, doesn't have a whole lot of regard for his body in that sense. Um, a, a great human being, man. Just somebody that I was really enjoyed getting to have in my room and get to know and look forward to get to know for hopefully a long time. Last question. Coach, the offense set a lot of records last year, but Coach Heupel said that one area of improvement that's needed is short yardage situation. How much is that related to being more physical on the offensive line? 100%, man. That's, uh, you really only get to measure yourselves in about three different categories, short yardage, sacks, and tackles for loss. Um, we got to be better up front, there's no doubt. We uh, had some situations today, I thought, you know, coming off the field, they tried to be more physical. Uh, that's something that's got to continue through uh, through spring, through fall camp, and for sure into the season. But yeah, third and short, that's got to be our down distance. We got to move the line of scrimmage. All right, thank you, Coach. Sir, thank you.